Hello Wolfpack, I've been spending the last day or so uh, trying my best to extrapolate the four-year cycle theory trend uh, and find out what lies ahead here. Now, obviously, a lot of this depends on where Bitcoin bottoms and when Bitcoin bottoms, but we're using this trend right now because it is a valid trend. We've had three separate data points, hence it is a valid trend uh, by mathematical law. And so looking at this trend, what can we expect in the future? Well, to answer this question, we need to understand the potential bottom zones for Bitcoin. Well, one of the potential bottom zones for Bitcoin is on the 200 week SMA, this green line here. Why is that a potential bottom zone? Let's delete everything. What we can see, the trend right now for Bitcoin is when we lose the 50 week, which is the red line, we end up at the green line, right? We've done that on three separate occasions. And every time we've held the, gr the green line, right? We have not seen one weekly candle below that green line, right? We've seen wicks below it. Okay, wicks are fine. We haven't seen weekly candle closes below the green line, which is a 200 week SMA. So at this point we have 15 months of accumulative data of which Bitcoin is holding above the 50, uh, the, the 200 week SMA while testing the vague area. 15 months straight, right? In the in total history of Bitcoin, out of those 15 months, uh, we have not seen even one. Right, that's 60 weeks. That's a year of data. We have not seen even one close below that green line. And so it is logical to assume at that point that, hey, maybe Bitcoin bottoms out on that green line like the trend, you know, like the trend kind of um, suggests here. Uh, and that green line between a week SMA is sitting at 22K right now. And so by the time we get there, it will likely be around 23K or 24K, uh, depending on when we get there, of course. Uh, and as per the four-year cycle trend, uh, we can be expected to get there uh, in November, right? Or around November. So November, December, October, somewhere in that Q4 region, we would be expected to reach the bear market bottom, most likely in November. So that's the first potential bottom region is for 200 week SMA. Uh, but then you'd ask, well, you know, what if this recession we're seeing or this pending recession we're seeing pushes Bitcoin below that level, which is obviously very uh, possible and it could very much happen. Uh, and then at that point, we would be forced to consider, well, what is the next horizontal support for Bitcoin below that 20K region? Uh, and to that, you'd be you'd be saying, basically, we're going to go to around 14K to, to 12K on Bitcoin. Uh, and that's between these two peaks here that I'm going to list out right now. So 14K to 12K would be the next logical uh, bear market bottom on Bitcoin. Why? Uh, because it's utilizing uh, this entire support zone that we that we formed throughout the bear market here. And also, uh, you will remember the bear flag we formed on Bitcoin uh, just a couple of months ago that lasted from January all the way through to April. That was actually targeting that 12 to 14K region. So there are two potential bottom zones for Bitcoin. Uh, the first of which is 23K or 24K, uh, which I would consider more likely. Uh, and the second of which is the more pessimistic uh, support zone and bear market potential bear market bottom, uh, which is sitting there at 12 to 14K, uh, which I would consider, um, you know, slightly more um, unlikely than the first scenario there, but it is definitely possible as due to the recession. So taking those two zones into account and assuming that Bitcoin bottoms out as per what the four-year cycle theory suggests, which should be from November to December, most likely at November, we can make some pretty interesting predictions about where Bitcoin is going to go in future bull markets. Uh, because first and foremost, right, the four-year cycle theory is based on the halving. It's called a four-year cycle of theory for a reason, right? Because every four years, the halving occurs on Bitcoin. That's obviously when the mining rewards for Bitcoin halves. Uh, and so this is very much driven by the four -year, by the halving. And so you'll notice that the first halving actually occurred here in 2012. Uh, and that's when the four-year cycle theory began, which is why I don't take any of this data into, into account here because it's pre-halving. Uh, pre and so it's pre-four-year cycle. Uh, and so the first cycle... Uh, in essence, was actually the cycle that started in 2012. Uh, and the first bull market was actually the bull market that started in 2013. Okay, so we had a four-year cycle. So again, every four years, so, so you've got four years total, you have three years of bear market, you have one year of bull market. If you wanted to break it down even more technically than that, you have one year of bear market intense downwards, two years of bear market accumulation, and then one year of bull market, right? So realistically speaking, you usually see about one year of intense down trending, two years of accumulation, and then one year of blow off top. Uh, in, in a bull market structure. And we've seen that on three separate occasions here. That's not something that's that's new to us here. So you know, what we can actually see is that the four-year cycle is not necessarily uh, based on price points. And this is why some people would think that, well, 
Why are you trying to predict price points with, with the four year cycle? Uh, you've said it yourself, it's based on date ranges. And this is entirely correct, right? I'm gonna tell you why I'm predicting price points in a second. But before I do that, this is based on date ranges. The four year cycle is an expert. In fact, one of the most accurate predictors of date ranges uh, on Bitcoin that you, that you will ever get. In fact, uh, you know what we can see here is a clear trend in the color coded patterns here. Between each top to top, there's usually 1,400 days. Between each bottom to bottom, there's usually 1,400 days. And between each top to bottom, there's usually 400 days or around 400 days. Now, obviously, we haven't seen you know too much data here uh, relating to this kind of stuff. Uh, but what I want to also bring up the fact is there is another trend here that we're kind of missing on Bitcoin. Uh, and that trend is uh, between bottom to top, there's exactly 1,064 days. And between the bottom to the top here, there's exactly 1,064 days. You know, trends like this, you know, they're not exactly coincidences, right? We have exactly 1,064 days on both cycle occurrences, occurrences from bottom to top. We have exactly, almost exactly 1,400 days from each bottom to bottom and each top to top. And we have almost exactly 400 days from each top to bottom on, on both occurrences here. You know, this is data that, yeah, you could say it's, it's a massive coincidence, but for it to be a coincidence would be absolute insanity, right? It would be insanely unlikely for this to be a coincidence. And so at that point, we have to assume it's a trend. Uh, and extrapolating that trend further, Right, what we can actually do and how we get to the bear market bottom is we can say, well, if there was 1,400 days from bottom to bottom uh, in this cycle and there's 1,400 days from top to top in both cycles, then let's just extrapolate. Let's just say there's 1,400 days from the last bottom to a speculated bottom. That would take us to November. And let's extrapolate further and say, well, if there's 400 days from top to bottom on both cycles, let's extrapolate further and say there's 400 days from top to bottom in this cycle. And that would put us in November again. So it's based on two data points. They're both putting us to towards November uh, and and also it's based on the data point uh, as per what I just showed you before 1064 days from bottom to top on both occurrences that validates the top in November as the true top for Bitcoin so it is undeniable at this point okay that the top is in for Bitcoin in terms of the logical four-year cycle top and the bull market top is very much in. And it is also undeniable that the most likely bottom, in my opinion, is undeniable. It might be you know different for some people, but in my opinion, it's undeniable that the most likely Bitcoin bottom is going to be around November. It doesn't have to be in November, around November. Uh, and the price point is a little bit more debatable, as I said before, 24K or 12 to 14K. So now that we've established this in, in a kind of in-depth manner, I do want to take a look at what could happen in the future, okay? And I've got a very interesting trend uh, to kind of look at here. I've actually gone ahead and said, okay, okay, so assuming we bottom out on Bitcoin around this November region, regardless of the price, right? If it's at the 24K bottom or if it's at the 14K bottom, we've taken both scenarios into account. Where could we go? When will the next bull market top happen? And when will the next bear market top, uh, bottom happen, okay? So... What I've actually done, as I said before, the four-year cycle of theory is based on the halving. And so what I've done is I've kind of calculated, well, it's not very easy to tell how much Bitcoin goes up each bull market. We don't have a lot of data on that. And it's rapidly depreciating in percentage points, obviously. So what I've actually done instead, uh, and it doesn't take much thought to realize this is the most logical way to approach this issue, is I've said, okay, how much percentage does Bitcoin got go from the bottom to the halving? Because we don't have data on when the next bull market top will be, but we do have data on when the next bear market bottom will be and what price that will be at. So we said, okay, in the halving in 2016, uh, so, so usually the bottom price is a bit lower than when the halving occurs, obviously. So from the bottom price in 2016, which was here, uh, to the halving, we saw a 160% gain, okay? From the bottom price in 2020 uh, to the halving, we saw... Uh, a, a, a sorry from the bottom price in 2018 to the halving sorry we saw a um 190 gain okay and then uh using those two data points there we can kind of get a middle number and say okay so let's say uh from the bottom price to the halving in 2024 which is when the next halving will occur we'll probably see about a 175 percent gain okay and then using that assumption we can say that from a 24k bottom so we're kind of speculating on where the bottom will be, right? A 175% gain from a 24K bottom, 24K bottom would put Bitcoin at a 66K Bitcoin at the halving. And then from a 14K bottom, it would put Bitcoin at a 38K Bitcoin from the halving. Okay, so 
might seem very complicated what I'm doing here, and it is rough speculation. I want to get that out of the way. It is obviously rough speculation, but it is speculation worth having. So, so, I've, so I've kind of identified a trend on Bitcoin that, yeah, the four-year cycle theory is based on the halving. Okay, I've also identified that the bear market bottom is usually much lower than where the halving occurs. Okay, the halving occurs much higher than the bear market bottom because we're into that accumul accumulation region. You'll notice I said before, out of the four-year cycle, you see one year of downwards, two years of accumulation, one year of upwards. You're in that accumulation region during the halving. So we usually see a slight gain or a pretty significant gain from the bottom to the halving. Okay, and since the four-year cycle is based on the halving, I've actually said, well, if we can identify the price of... Bitcoin will be at, at the halving, we can very well then find the price Bitcoin will be at, at the top. Okay, so I've said, if we bottom out at 24K, we're going to be at 66K at the halving. If we bottom out at 14K, we're going to be at 38K on the halving, based on, data, based on the data we have. And then I've got ahead and said, okay, so from the halving to the top in previous cycles, and we have three data points for this, right? In 2012, the halving in 2012 to the 2013 top, we saw a 25,000% gain. In the halving in 2016 to the 2017 top, we saw a 7,000% gain, which is an 82% decrease from the previous halving to top, right? In 2020 halving to the 2021 top, we saw a 1,200% gain, which again is an 82% decrease from the previous halving to the top, okay? And then using that trend, we have three data points and we have two, you know, two separate occasions which the number 82% decrease is coming up. So assuming that an 82% decrease will happen again from the speculated halving, which is at 66K or 38K, to the top, we can assume that from the halving to the top in 24, uh, 2024 to 2025, we will see a 216% gain, which is an 82% decrease from the previous cycle, okay? So therefore, from our bottom prices, okay, if Bitcoin bottoms out this bear market at 24K, we can assume that Bitcoin will top out the next bull market at 217,000. If Bitcoin bottoms out the bear market at 14K, we can assume the next bull market top will be at 122,000, both of which in 2025. And what we've done to identify that is just extending the date range trend for Bitcoin. So we have a clear trend, 1,400 days between top to top, etc. We've extended that further. We can say that the next bull market top on Bitcoin, if the four year cycle remains, uh, will be in October 2025. And hence, we can go ahead and apply the trend even further and say the next bear market bottom on Bitcoin, assuming the four-year cycle trend remains, will be in October 2026. So what we can go ahead and do is say, okay, Bitcoin, if it bottoms out at 24K in this cycle in November or around November this year, we will very likely be at 217K by the next bull market top. And if the bottom's out lower at 14K, we will very likely be at 122K in the next bull market top in 2025. I know this is a bit of a stretch. We're stretching this data quite a bit. Some people aren't comfortable with that, but I wouldn't consider it that overly, opt uh, you know, that, that, that much of a stretch, to be honest with you. And these numbers make a lot of sense to me, right? 24K is the most likely bottom for Bitcoin in the cycle, in my opinion, okay? A 217K Bitcoin in 2025 does not seem... Uh, you know, ridiculous at all. In fact, it seems very, 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 very uh, reasonable. You know, it doesn't seem overly optimistic. It's not a million, like some people are saying, and it's not overly pessimistic, like 100K, right? And then even if we go to 14K, 122K top is not, you know, unreasonable. That's, that's 2X what we've seen now. People have to consider at this point, okay? People have to consider that Bitcoin is massive now. It's a big thing. Everyone knows about Bitcoin, okay? And when everyone knows about something, there's less potential people to buy it, right? Because everyone or most people who would be interested in buying it have already made their minds up about whether they should buy it or not. Obviously, they can change their minds. But the point is, there's no real massive amount of new customers. It's not going to grow at this rapid pace that we saw in 2013, that we saw in 2017, even in 2020. It's not going to grow like that anymore. It's a household name now. Even people in third world countries know what Bitcoin is. Maybe not know what it is, but they've heard of it. They know vaguely that it's kind of like the electro dollar or whatever, you know, at, at a basic level. And so you can't expect Bitcoin to keep growing at this exponential rate. When we're talking about a 217K Bitcoin, we're talking about a Bitcoin that is three times larger than what it was in 2021. That is a massive increase in market cap uh, and people should not take that lightly, right? You know, just because Bitcoin, just because crypto is a volatile market, it doesn't mean it's going to be volatile forever, especially Bitcoin. Yeah, altcoins might be, but not Bitcoin. Uh, and so I think these predictions are very interesting to look at. So again, 
going over it one one more time for your cycle date range trend what we can see if the date range trend continues and if we bottom out at the relevant prices we can see based on the bottom to halving prices and percentage gain from bottom to halving in previous cycles and also based on percentage gain from halving to top in previous cycles and a percentage decrease from the last halving to top from previous cycles uh, we can see that essentially uh, if Bitcoin bottoms out at 24K, it's going to be at 217K in 2025. If Bitcoin bottoms out at 14K, it's going to be at 122K in 2025. It's very complicated, uh, but I hope you guys find it useful. And you can see I've actually drawn out what this would look like here. So we've got the four-year cycle trend right now. This yellow box is where we're projecting Bitcoin to top out in the next cycle and at the date range. Uh, and that's just basically basically uh, if it bottoms out at 24K or 14K in between that range. And so we've got a range of prices there. Uh, and we've also got a date range. Uh, we've given it a month lead way on either side, which is what you need to do in a four-year cycle trend. Uh, and then the orange line is when the bear market bottom will be in the next cycle. So very interesting to look at, um, to be honest. And you know, I'm excited to see uh, how this trend plays out. So thanks for watching. Uh, but before I end the video, I do want to take a look at the BitGet Exchange. Uh, and I do want to talk about a few things, including the Crypto Academy and the VIP membership uh, for Wolves Crypto. I highly recommend, uh, oh, sorry, I highly uh, appreciate it a lot if you guys would stick around for this part of the video uh, because it means a lot um, if you guys can support the channel, of course. So the first thing, BitGet Exchange. Uh, my, one of my favorite exchanges here, uh, I use it as my secondary exchange. So the reason why I'm asking you to sign up to BitGet Exchange right now, I'm not asking you, I'm kind of suggesting it to you, is because it has half the fees of Binance. It also has... 50 to 60 futures pairs, and it has hundreds of spot pairs. So it's like Binance, but half the fees. Also, in addition to that, and, and in, in competition with Binance, it's also got systems in place to reduce the amount of scam wicks on the exchange. Uh, now, you'll notice that as of recent days, especially in this in, in this uh, capitulation week on Bitcoin, as of recent on May the 9th, uh, we saw a massive amount of volatility and different exchanges had a massive amount of different prices there. BitGet had uh, the, the stationary market uh, you know, I guess you could say generally accepted market price. It didn't overextend, it didn't underextend. And so it led to people who were in futures trades not getting unfairly shut out of trades. They have systems in place to assure that unfair liquidations, unfair scam weeks do not occur. Uh, you can also sign up and get access to one to around $4,163 in trial funds. Uh, a decent portion of that being actual funds, right? So trial funds is what you can trade with. It's kind of like a bonus. And then actual funds, I think it's 400 USD roughly uh, in just straight cash deposited into your account uh, by completing a few simple tasks. So go ahead and sign up to that uh, using my referral link in the description below. Uh, the Crypto Academy Become a Trader course. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about th this a bit more tomorrow because we're getting a trust pilot set up so we can get some reviews coming in. Uh, but if you want to learn how to trade during the bear market, you want to take advantage of the bearish price action uh, and, and kind of step away from the charts for a bit and learn how to trade so you can come back way better, way more competent and make some money in the market. They become a trader 10 unit course is something me, uh, myself and Megawell Crypto have developed uh, over the course of the last basically six months. Uh, and we've released it recently, 10 unit course, learn everything you need to know about TA and how to become a trader. Go ahead and check it out on the website below. Uh, and you can chuck us an email uh, using the link on the bottom of the website page. Furthermore, I do want to talk about uh, Wolves of Crypto uh, VIP. So if you click the, the join button on a PC on my channel, you'll see this uh, tab come up and you'll see everything you gain access to uh, if you pay for the VIP membership, which is 40 AUD a month, around 28 USD a month, an absolute bargain for what you're receiving uh, in comparison to other VIP groups. First and foremost, you get loyalty badges and custom emojis used in chat that kind of identify you as a paying member, identify you as a VIP who's showing support for the channel. You also get one altcoin trading signal every second day, extremely profitable signals we've been posting in there. You also get my prioritized reply to your comments. You also get a two hour video on market psychology. And on top of that, you know, this is so many things here, you'll get a weekly access to a newsletter that briefly explains all the important things going on in the market with Bitcoin and altcoins. So that's very interesting. Uh, getting a lot of positive feedback. Over 160 members in Wolves Crypto VIP. Uh, go ahead and become one of the members there for just the low price of 28 USD a month. Extremely cheap. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.